Alt Barn is here to talk about Gorilla's sixth album. The, the, the band are now 17 years it's old. It's not really, it's a seventh album, it's my view. It's of the full, the full I consider an album. Unfortunately, my record label didn't <laughs> uh, consider it. So, I don't know. Well, 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 you know, I mean, okay, I didn't finish off the lyrics. Yeah. I didn't, because I didn't, because I did every song in, in one day on tour. Yeah. Now, so that was the deal. Yeah. Right? So it's seventh album then. Well, so no, no. six and a half. Six and a half. Yeah, six, yeah, six, and, six and, a half. and a half album. In 2010, after the somewhat success of Plastic Beach, Gorillaz released The Fall. The album was written by Damon and part of the live band from the Escape to Plastic Beach tour. Or in the context of the Gorillaz lore, 2D wrote it, without any help from his bandmates. The album was written while the band was in America on an iPad during the Plastic Beach tour, which can be visibly seen in the song titles. Except for a small mention in my 20 years of Gorillaz video, I haven't really touched on The Fall, so in this video I will be. So let's get started. The Fall was released on December 25th, 2010 to Gorillaz fan club members. It was then physically released on April 19th, 2011. Unlike previous albums, The Fall only had two singles, acting as a double A side, being Armorillo and Revolving Doors, being released on March 14th, 2011. The single's best reach was making its way to number 12 on the Japan Hot Overseas Billboard. Along with the Fall's release, it reached number 12 in the UK and number 24 in the US, and it sold 180,000 copies, making it the lowest selling Gorillaz album as of this recording. But avoiding the charts, I think the Fall is a great album, but lacks what other Gorillaz albums had, such as having all the band members play on the album. Normally, none of the actual musicians are credited, but on the full they are, which I think is good, but I count the full more as a B-side album than an official studio album. It gets to the point where not even Gorillaz themselves really talk about the album, such as not putting it in the G collection they put out and not celebrating the 10 years since it was released. Now the way I've titled this video might be a bit misleading. I think my main point is I don't think it should have been called a studio album, but in some way what I meant by the title was that maybe it should have been another project for Damon to put out. Because the early element of Gorillaz is the fact they have the collaborators from the tour. There are good things for this album though. For example, every track links, in a way that most Gorillaz albums do. For example, take the track Phono to Arizona and Revolving Doors. I think the fact that it was written on the American part of the tour has a kind of journey to it, like Demon Days. But despite this, I still think of The Fall as a B-side album, even though it's not. Coincidentally, the first two tracks both remind me of B-sides. Take the track, Phone to Arizona, like before. It reminds me of the first track on D-side, 68 State. Revolving Doors reminds me of the last track on G-Size, 1-2-D-3. The good thing that I feel like mentioning is that The Fall is a cross between Plastic Beach and Humans, obviously because it was released between the two, but mostly since it has elements of Plastic Beach and Humans. For example, I can hear elements of Plastic Beach due to the fact that I can hear drum machines, which of course has been used in most if not all Gorillaz albums, but most notably Plastic Beach. 
I can hear elements of humans, with of course the fact that songs link, like I said before, but also because half the instruments aren't real. What I mean by this is that there isn't actually bass on half the tracks, for example. But despite the album being criticised for being out of character with the other albums, depending on how much of a fan you are, then you would know that there was a documentary in 2019 called Reject False Icons, but if you're a bigger fan, then you would know of Bananas, the 2008 documentary, with Reject False Icons being about humans and the now now, and Bananas being about Gorilla self title and Demon Days. But believe it or not, there's actually three documentaries about the making of Gorilla's albums. There was one for Plastic Beach, but not the full. Despite the artwork not changing for the new album like before, or not having the phase change for the album, lacking videos, singles and artwork, it is still considered Gorilla's fourth album. But when you get down to it, it is a full length album with 15 tracks, and it is a good album. But it would have been nice to get a full tour for the full. The only tracks that are still played are Revolving Doors and Shy Town. But anyway, I hope you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll be back in the next one.